Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Wilson, welcome back to Magic Talk. Today we're going to be covering some news, uh, magic related and non-magic related. Then we're going to be looking at the new White Weenie build in Standard with the arrival of Scars of Mirrodin. We're going to talk about what it looks like, uh, why it's good, and what we can do to beat it. So let's get right to it, shall we? The first thing I want to talk about is, if you guys don't listen to uh, the Yo MTG Taps podcast at IWantMyMTG.com, you should. They they got some really good information. I uh, went back and some and checked out some other podcasts as well. They're really good. Uh, if if you if you like some more in depth analysis and details about the Magic World and tournaments and whatnot, um, they're really good. Really good site, and I highly recommend the the podcast here. And uh, Thanks to the guys at Yo MTG Taps, Yo MTG Taps, kind of hard to say, um, for putting a plug for me in their one video a while back. So definitely check those guys out. Good magic related stuff there. Another thing I wanted to throw out there real quick is uh, I, I didn't really say anything about this until now. I entered the Star City Games talent search, and they uh, apparently put me into the next round. Um, for those of you that don't know, Star City Games put out a contest uh, looking for new talent. People to do write articles, this, that, and a third. Um, one of the uh, I submitted one of my videos, and they um, posted the posted my video on their site under the article section here under Talent Search. So definitely would appreciate it. Maybe if you guys want to go there and and uh, uh, support um, my attempts at trying to become the next guy to do videos for StarCityGames.com so that would be awesome and also check out some of the other guys that submitted submitted some of their stuff it's very interesting and, 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 and really good stuff so be sure to check them out as well some non-magic related news me and a friend of mine Ian Johnson this guy here started another channel called the two cents.com or the two cents at uh, YouTube I'm sorry um, we talk about philosophy and, and politics like religion and, and 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 the sort. So if you guys are, are into something, you want to check out something non-magic related uh, that I do for once, um, go ahead and, and check this um, the channel out. We only have two videos up right now, and we only got three subscribers. I'm one of them, but um, feel free to check us out. I'll put the link to to this down in the description box below, so you can check this out. So to the deck list, this is what. Uh, one of the top 16 decks from a recent tournament looks like. This was posted on TCGPlayer.com. Now this is the White Weenie deck, returning one of one of my favorite dudes in standard right now, Cordulas. I think this dude is really good, and thanks to Scars of Mirrodin, has made him even better. Run down through the deck real quick. We got four Glen Hawks, four Cordulas, four Core Outfitters, four Core Skyfish or yeah Skyfishers, four Memnites, four Ornithopters, four Stoneforge Mystic. Uh, for the artifacts and spell suits, we have three adventuring gear, two argentum armor, one dark steel axe, a mox opal, four quests for the holy relic, and one sort of body in mind. Down here to the mana base, twelve planes and eight fetches. <coughs> so, <coughs> oh, excuse me. What we can see here is that the entire main deck, uh, with the exception of sort of body in mind um, and argentum armor, actually curves out of two. You're never actually going to. It's going to on a rare occasion. You actually cast sort of body and mind in Argentum armor. Ideally, you want to drop quest for the Holy Relic, turn one, and then drop a bunch of dudes in play. And hopefully, being able to sack quest for the Holy Relic on turn two and swinging with something that has an Argentum armor equipped to it. So this deck's very explosive and come out very quickly. Uh, I know a friend of mine is running a similar deck list. I think he runs four Mox Opals though, and doesn't run. Uh, as many Stoneforge Mystics, and I don't think it runs Adventuring Gear at all. Which, for this build, I think Adventuring Gear is really good uh, with Stoneforge Mystic. Finally, we see it searching out something other than a Basilisk Collar for once. Um, <clears throat> but searching out our uh, Adventuring Gear, and with all these fetch lands, it goes goes really good on any of these dudes. Even your Ornithopters become threatening at that point. So, really good uh, synergy there. But... Ideally, if you can get the Mox Opal and the Planes on turn one, drop a bunch or drop your Quest for the Holy Relic on first turn, then drop all your dudes and play. Turn two, hopefully you can sack the Relic and start swinging with the Argentum Armor. If they just played a land, you can blow up the one land they've played and pretty much lock them out of the game. For the, for the rest of the game, you you have control and unable they're unable to stop you at that point. 
So this deck is very, very fast and very explosive. Um, when it gets a, a half decent hand, it's hard to keep up with because of, of how many dudes it puts into play and uh, how quickly it does it. So going down here to the sideboard, <coughs> we see Jinxed Idol, which I think is a really interesting card to be putting in the uh, in the sideboard here. But when you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. You have a lot more creatures than your opponent does, especially early in the game. You can cast Jinx Idol for two, sacrifice one of your smaller dudes, and give Jinx Idol to your opponent. Now, that, now suddenly they're taking damage, and they can't keep up with it. They can't. Uh, uh, they're either going to have to sacrifice one of their creatures that they're relying on to get them to where they need to go, uh, to give Jinx Idol back to you. In which case, you just give it right back, or they don't have any creatures out to sack the Jinx Idol at all, such as the the um, like a control deck. Uh, maybe they have Wall of Omens. If they do, they're sacrificing it to Jinx Idol, allowing you to swing back. So, um, that's that's only if um, they they have the wall. And even so, at instant speed, you can just give it back to your opponent. So this is this is actually an excellent card, I think, <clears throat> for this deck. It's kind of a makeshift creature removal, as well as getting some extra damage uh, across your opponent. So great idea there. It's it's really cool to see cards like this uh, making an appearance some of these low level cards that, that no that people kind of overlooked. We have Kemba, who's obviously really good with all these different equipment cards in here. If you can get her out and attach a bunch of stuff to her, start making a bunch of a bunch of dudes. Core Firewalkers there to help improve your red matchups. We have the two Leon and Arbiters to slow down the ramp decks, giving you plenty of time to kill them. The four Luminar Ascensions, which are really good against control decks and, and other decks that, that don't do uh, so much damage so early. If you can get this into play uh, early enough, it's a really good card to have. And like I said, uh, with the exception of Kemba, which cost, which only costs three, the rest of the stuff in the sideboard here only costs two mana. So being able to cut the the, the mana base down to twenty lands and leaving that leaves about four slots open for for other spells, I think is a really great idea. A really great addition to this deck makes it very uh, very unique and very very fast. So what are some cards you can use to beat this? Well. Uh, board sweeping is a really good one. Day of Judgment, um, Marsh Casualties will probably be okay, um, and Consume the Meek isn't bad at all. But you also have to realize that you uh, you have to make it to turn five. You have to get the five mana to Consume the Meek, the four mana to Day of Judgment. It makes it extremely hard. So maybe something earlier game, a Pyroclasm, might work on most of these dudes, with the exception of Core Skyfisher, of course. But the rest of these dudes died to Pyroclasm, which Core Firewalker here is in the sideboard for to kind of help out with that. Because when they do, if they do sweep the board, uh, you can you still have your Core Firewalkers and you're gaining life every time they cast their red spells. So um, Pyroclasm might be a good uh, answer to this deck, along with other board sweepers. Um, early spot removal, maybe uh, early enchantment removal. I'm pretty sure Demystify is still in standard right now. It's a good way to kind of get rid of the quest for the holy relics, or uh, maybe even you can use um, Vampire Hexmage. This isn't a bad way to, to keep the counters off of quest for the holy relic. So uh, that's a little bit about the deck and what it looks like. If you guys are playtesting this deck, or if you're if you are uh, have experience beating this deck, uh, please feel free to comment below and, and let us know. You know how you feel and what your take on the deck is. And if you're playing it, let us know what your results are and what changes you've made. Uh, if if you have trouble with this deck in your area, let us know what you're doing to try to beat this deck. Uh, like I said, it's it's if if you're not prepared for it, it can ca catch you off guard and it wins very very quickly. So that's all I have for you today. I will put the links to everything I talked about uh, down in the description box below for YoMTG Taps for the Star City Games Talent Search page. Uh, whoops, stop that there. And for uh, the new YouTube channel that me and my friend Ian have created, and I will put the uh, the link for this uh, deck list down in the description box below. That way, if you guys want to build the deck, you, you feel free to. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.